temptation of love of money. But today we are looking at the temptation of being proud. Can I tell you this truth? The sin of pride is greater than the sin of fornication. Let's look at the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 5. Proverbs 16 verse 5. We also look at James chapter 4 verse 6. If I'm Proverbs 16 5, let's be on our feet. I've forgotten that they have changed my monitor from here. I was about looking like this. Now be on your feet. Let's read together in honor of God's word. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 5. Are we set? After the count of three. One, two, and three. Let's read. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Now, I want somebody to give me an example of what we call, leave that scripture, abomination. An example of what you call abomination. You can give an example. I want to hear from the congregation now. Abom something you see that you say, this thing is abomination. Give me one. Be free, or should I pick you? Something that you see, you say, this is an abomination. It's common. That one is common. Yes, ma'am. If a man is sleeping with his daughter, yes, that's one. Group settled. Let me hear what this group. Abomination. If you don't talk, we won't sit down. Say something. Say something. A man turned to a woman. Good. Abomination. This group. A you. Yes, you will sit down. We have said it. No, you have, your group is said. I want this group, the center here. Brother Francis, don't run away. Go back to your group. Yes, ma. Ma? I didn't hear you. If anyone, oh, yeah, see all of you. Uh -huh. If a person begins to have sexual intercourse with an animal, if you stay there and see, what will you do? Ah, ah, it's an abomination. The Bible is now saying, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Now, can you see that? Pride is more terrible than even fornication. You know when people are saying a lot of people will go to hellfire, people are thinking it is only those who steal. It is only those who fornicate. It's something that you see as an abomination, you don't bring close. Am I communicating? So to God, a proud person is an abominable person. Is somebody that he or she and God cannot have friendship. Please reduce this monitor. It's giving feedback. He and God can never have friendship. Now, can you see that pride is terrible? That's Old Testament. Now, go to James chapter 4 and verse 6. James chapter 4 and verse 6. New Testament. James chapter 4. Now, look at this. The Bible says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resists resist the proud. Hmm. But giveth grace unto the humble. What does he mean to resist? To fight against. Now, a person resisting you is a person standing against you. 
Now, and the scripture is clearly saying that a proud man, it is God that fights him. Now, this is to show us that so many people today that thinks that the devil is the one fighting them, it may be God fighting them. Because God will always resist the proud. Say it together with me. God will always resist the proud. Say it again. Do that again. One more time. God will always resist the proud. Now that's why today I want to teach you about the grace of God how to resist the, that temptation. You know what? One, thing, one of the things I discover about the devil is this. When the devil tries to fight you, he does not get you, he will try to set you up with God. Once he succeeds to make you proud, he knows that he doesn't need to fight you again. He will now know that it is you and God. And please, can I answer you, ask you a question? Who can win in a battle against God? Nobody. No strong man, no wise man, no connected man can win in a battle against God. That's why pride is a very terrible uh, thing that we must not allow. I wrote here, this shows us that, the pr that pride turns whoever allows it into an enemy of God. Beloved, there is no man that can win in a battle against the Lord. It shows us that so many failures that a lot of people experience today is not from the devil. It could be from the Lord. It could be from the Lord. Now, and from this summary, look at this. From these words, we summarize, and this is my discovery. When the devil tries so hard to bring down a child of God, hear me this, and he sees that his effort is not productive, he will try he will try pride method in order to set him up against his God. That's why this teaching is very important. I pray that God will open your eyes of understanding and catch the message of today so that you will not fall into the error of pride in Jesus' name. Now, let's answer a question. Who is a proud person? Now, to answer it, we'll go back to that Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5, but this time from the Message Bible. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. I'm coming to answer. Who is a proud person? Tani Onigiraga. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. Now, look at it. It's on the screen. Message Bible says, God can't stomach arrogance or pretense. Believe me, he will put those upstairs in their place. Now, look at that scripture. That scripture is showing us that a proud person has a mentality. And what is his mentality? He believes I am upstairs. Hello? Now, I come again. A proud person believes in his mind that he is upstairs. He believes he is in a level that so many people he believes or think are not. So who is a proud man? Write this down. From the Message Bible, proud people are those who allow their feeling of being upstairs already to make them disregard other humans. I come again. Proud people are those who allow their feeling of being upstairs, being upstairs already, to make them disregard their fellow humans. And by this, they misbehave. Don't forget this. They have a mentality. And what's in their mind? They, they believe that I am in a level that some people are not in. I'm going to show you from scriptures. And because of that mindset that they have, it makes them to look down on people. Who are you to talk to me? Some of them, apart that they look down on people, it makes them not even recognize God. Have you seen a proud man talking about his achievements? He will talk as if God did not help him in any way. It is my two plus two that made four. They will tell you it is my connection that took me to this place. They will tell you things that even you yourself will be shocked. Now, because they have a mindset that they are upstairs. They have a mindset 
that they are obsessed. Let's look at some examples. Now, in the life of these people, I want to share their experience with. Number one is King Nebuchadnezzar. What made him proud? It was his achievements. Daniel chapter 4, look at 30 to 32. The Bible says he, he stood on the top of his, of his palace. He stood like this and he was going around. He was going around and he was looking at the things that, has, that he has. King James Version, please. Let's look at this. He said, and boasted. And, uh, uh, okay, the king spoke saying, is this great Babylon, look at what he was saying, that I have built for a royal dwelling by my might. I built it. It was built by my might. It was built by my power. It was built for my honor. Look at what he was saying. Now, he believed, I am upstairs. This thing, I built it. Move on to the next verse. And for my majesty, while the word was still in, his, in the king's mouth, the Bible says a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. God wants to show him that I made you. You didn't make yourself. And they shall drive you from them. And your dwelling shall be in the, what? In the, in the beast of the field. They shall make you eat grass. God wanted to show him. You didn't make yourself. The upstairs that Nebuchadnezzar believed that he was, was the upstairs of what? Achievements. People don't become proud for nothing. It is something that the enemy will put their attention on. In the life of Nebuchadnezzar, he was looking at the things he has achieved. And look at this. He was reduced to the point that the Bible says he began to eat grass. Look at another example again. Apart from Nebuchadnezzar, there was another man. They call his name Nabal. In the case of Nabal, it was class. He started thinking. The Bible says when David sent men to him in 1 Samuel 25. Look at that. 1 Samuel 25, 10 to 11. He sent men to him. Please go to David. Tell him that we need something. He's sharing his products. Tell him that he should give us something. You know what Nabal said? He said, show me. 1 Samuel chapter 20, uh, chapter 25. From verse 10 and verse 11, then Nabal answered David's servant and said, Who is David? Now, why is he talking like that to David? He believed that when it comes to class and achievement, ah, same level cannot. So if you don't know right, it's proud, pride. For you to be looking at someone and say, we are, we are not in the same level. Maybe because you went to school, you went to you went to you went to university, you went to Puli. God doesn't distribute achievement by these things, so God doesn't distribute greatness by all these things. The Bible says promotion coming not from the east, not from the west. Where does it come from? It comes from, from the Lord. It is God that determines who goes up and who comes down. Nabal said, then, then, uh, then Nabal answered David's servant and said, who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays. Can you see? Servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Who is this small boy? Show me the next verse. Verse 11. Ah, shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my sharers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? Who are you? <laughs> That's another level of pride. His own pride was pride of what? We are not in the same class. We used to have a woman like that that was my mother's friend in those days. I don't know whether she's still alive. She was a medical doctor working in UCH. They came to my mommy's restaurant to eat. And my mom saw her doctor, so, so, and so. And welcomed her, put food in front of her to eat. And my mom too brought food for, for, for the driver. Not on the same table. Not with the same plate. Oh. And the woman shouted, what nonsense. What nonsense. Will I be eating pounded yam? And my driver be eating pounded yam? What nonsense. What nonsense. She finished eating. My mom said, okay, hold on. She finished eating. They brought the bowl that she used to wash her hand. She has washed hand though. We have poured the water away. We want to use it to give the driver water to wash her. He said, what? Will I share the same washing hand bowl with my driver? <laughs> Upon all our great, we didn't hear anything about her again. Do you know that after this statement, Nabal died? So, what led to Nabal's pride was class. Look at another one. Let's look at another one. After Nabal, then we go to Herod. 
Look at the case of Herod. To Herod, it was eloquence of his oratory gift. You know, some people are so gifted. Go to Acts chapter 12, 22 and 23. He was a gifted man. Very gifted. And people were saying, ah, ah, this is not the voice of man. This is the voice of God. Acts of Apostles chapter 12, 22 and 23. Now look at it. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God and not a man. The next verse, what now happened to him in the next verse? Then immediately an angel of the Lord did what? Struck him. Because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and he died. Now, in the case of Herod, you know what made him proud? It was his gifted speech. Because the way he was talking, people say, wow, this guy is not man. This man is, this one is God. Uh -uh. He has become a God on his own. And the Bible says, because he did not tell the people the truth. That I'm not God though. I'm not a man like you. I'm not a man like you. The Bible says an angel struck him. Maggots ate him alive because of one reason. He didn't give glory back to God. Now we can go on like that. Let me show you another example again. Hallelujah. See, I hear. You can do better. To so Lucifer, it was his beauty. You know, we call devil today. Devil was not devil before. Devil was Lucifer, the angel of beauty and the angel of music. God so much beautify him. But one day, because you know, because of the angel of beauty, people always look at you. People will always praise him. You are fine. Uh -uh. People will always say good things about him. He now said, I'm going to make my throne greater than the throne of God. The Bible says, while it was in his heart, pride does not start from the lips. Where does it start from? From the heart. God struck him. He moved from Lucifer and he became a beast, Satan, and he was thrown to the earth. Hear me. I want to say this. Somebody's source of pride could be their age. Somebody's source of pride could be their title. Hear me. Somebody's source of pride could be their age, uh, their, their size. I've, I have seen people who become proud because of their age. I'm not your mate. I'm not your father's mate. I am not in your class. Is, is something wrong with you? Don't talk to me like that. Me and your junior, bro, your, your senior brother, we are, we are friends. Ah, calm down. Calm down. That belief that you are upstairs, do not allow it to push you into becoming arrogant. So who is a proud man? A proud man, like I said, is whoever is feeling that he's been upstairs already makes him disregard his fellow humans. Let's take the next question. Are you learning something? Yes, what is the end result of proud people? What will happen to proud people? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. The King, yes, okay, we'll take the message Bible. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. He says, pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. That's King James. NIV now, uh, sorry, Message Bible now says, for first pride, then the crash. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. Look at it. First the pride, before destruction, a haughty spirit, before a fall. No proud person can ever have a future. Hello? No proud person can ever have a future. Look at this, this one says, Pride goes before destruction. Look at it very well. A haughty spirit before a fall. So if you see a proud person, understand that that person cannot last. That's why, calm down. What do you have? That you were not giving. What do you have that there's nobody that has it? What do you have? Oh, how how would are you? You know, some of you you have you have you have become brother God or brother Holy Spirit. Calm down. We we'll look at how to, to conquer. Now let's look at the next question. I've shown you the end of result of proud people. Number three, quest, third question. What is the devil's strategy to inject the feeling of pride into people's heart? What is his plan? Bow ni satanish man bi e mi gbe raga wonu awon eniyan. 
Number one. Number one. Number one. Be careful of the praises people give you. In ye no man know. Can I tell you this truth? Look up. I have seen beautiful ladies kneel down in front of me with one prayer point. So I know I don't have husband. And you'll be asking, as beautiful as, beautiful as you are. Be careful of praise. When people begin to praise you, don't ever think you are special. There is more than a thousand of you out there. Let me tell you a story that happened to Prophet Elijah. The Bible says after that confrontation that he killed 450 prophets of Baal, the king's wife, that's Ahab's wife, Jezebel, sent message to him, Elijah, if by this time tomorrow your head is still on your neck, I'm a bastard. Elijah ran. He got to the prince of God. He said, oh God, I want to die. Oh God, I want to die. Oh God, I want to die. Kill me. I want to die. I want to die. God said, why do you want to die? He said, they have killed all your prophets. I am the only one left. Lord, I'm the only one left. Everybody has left you. I am the only one following you. You better take me now. He was shocked when God said to him, Elijah, he says, sir, meet me at the other mountain. He went again to the mountain. God asked him again. God was thinking whether he would change his mind. Let's see whether from here to there, Elijah will take, change his mind. He got there again. Lord, Lord. Elijah said, God said, what do you want, Elijah? He said, everybody has left you. I am the only one following you. Take my life. You know what God said to him? He said, Elijah, go now to so, so, so and so place. You will find a man. His name is Elisha. This man too that you are rejecting, Go and give him. He will continue from where you stop. One. He said, go and anoint Jehu to be king. Two. He said to me, God now said, do you know, should I tell you, there are 7,000 people in this land that have not compromised. I know that's where Elijah too will come to his senses. So I'm not the only one. When people praise you, be careful. Because the number one thing that the devil uses to inject pride is praise. I come again. The number one thing that the devil uses to, to inject pride is what? Is praise. When people are telling you, you are good, nobody is like, ah, in fact, ah, you, you are the best cook in this place. Now lie. If you allow it to enter your mind, listen, you will begin to behave as if you are special and there is no one like you. I had a story. I think I read it in a book. There was this brother in this fellowship. He was the only bass, bass voice singer that the fellowship had. Anytime they want to sing, he's always mounting the mic and he would take the bass voice. Whenever he sings the bass voice, their song is balanced, sweet to hear. Then he began to feel proud. People were saying, if Brother Shola is not there, praises will not be sweet. If Brother Shola is not there, praises will not be sweet. If Brother Shola is... So one day, I don't know what they said they were doing in the Riaza. He didn't do well. The choir coordinator rebuked him. But Ashola, stop that rubbish that you are doing. He looked at himself. He hold me rubbish that I'm doing. I won't come for the answer. On, you know, I won't follow, join you to sing. He didn't tell them, but he just said it in his mind. I won't join you to sing. Do you know that? That Sunday, but Ashola sat in church. The choir sang. He was not there. Yes, the song was not balanced. The song was not balanced. Everybody knew that something was missing. But Brother Shola was waiting. If they don't come and beg me, I will not come back. People were saying, ah, Brother Shola is not here. This song is not, it's not balanced. Brother Shola is not here. So he was also waiting at home. The coordinator will come and beg me. But he was shocked. In the course of the week, somebody that noticed that he was not in the understand came up and said to the choir court, and I have this bass voice. I don't know if I can fit into your choir. You know, he is at home. He didn't go to choir Riaza. He was waiting for them to come and beg him. Right there in the choir Riaza, they rehearsed the song. The bass guy, the man played. His bass voice was more solid than that. They didn't say anything. So Brother Shola came on Sunday to service to laugh at the choir. As they started to sing, they had one kind of bass. The bass was just coming from behind. 
but I should not look around, look left. I am not the one singing. And people were moved. Nobody was looking towards his direction again. People stood up and they were clapping that the song was balanced. In fact, that was when I discovered that people quickly forget people. Oh, you know, they say they forget people quick, quick. He was shocked. Nobody, after the service, he was expecting that people come and talk to him. That, ah, bro, what happened? Nobody came to him. Everyone was just coming to clap for the choir. He now said, I will wait. Whether they will invite me, they'll come and beg me by next. One month, they didn't come. He now stylishly went to the choir Riaza. Are you taking me on team? They forgive him all, but he was now second base voice. So now he had the rival. That book that I read, they said he has been begging for his place since then. Tell your neighbor, you are not special. It is the grace of God. <laughs> Tell him, it is the grace of God that is making you who you are. And that grace is on everybody. How does the devil impact, inject pride? It starts with that. I won't forget that song. Mama, that share low on me. Oluwa, mama, le mi kuro ni bi shere. Oluwa, ron mi ni shere. E mi yo je. You are not special. If God is using you to do anything, if God is blessing you in a peculiar way, Always recognize that you are a product of one thing. What is that thing? Grace. My mentor told us a story. I won't forget. Let me quickly tell you this story. In that story, he said there's one man in their church. He's the highest tither. Anytime that brother pays tight, they use the tight to offset all the salaries of the church staff. My mentor told me this. He said, so this particular day, they had a service. He preached. And after the message, they said, the brother said, that preaching that pastor preached is, insult, is an insult to me. Ah, who you be? Tani me, tani. Help me pray that song. Tani me. Uh -huh. My, uh -huh. Take it from the beginning. You, you, you lifted me uh -huh. above my dreams. You blessed me above all things. Now, wait, we are coming. We are coming back to it. Hold that song for me. So this man got angry and decided, I won't pay my tithe. My mentor said, the first month, it was not easy. Second month, it no easy. They struggle to pay salary. But by the third month, God had sent somebody from abroad. He moved from one country abroad. God said he should come to Nigeria to establish his business. He now lives up all this in the church and joined the church. So his own tithe that he paid was huge. My mentor said four months after, he came to take a photograph at Ring Road. This big tight brother now saw him and said, and drove and followed him to this photo studio and said, Bishop, you didn't even ask of me. He said, how? You didn't notice that I have not been paying tight for the past four months. I was angry with you. So I withdrew my tight. As I'm talking to you now, that man is dead. They are burying him. the devil is making men to praise you. Be careful. That's where pride comes from. What is happening to young, young pastors today? It's pride. 
Maybe God used you to open blind person eye. You pray for someone that have headache. The headache disappear. The next thing they can't talk to you again. Pastor Debo he said the anointing, the anointed hands that cannot wash plate cannot raise the dead. Abida did you know? Oh Tony, anointed hands still live for toilets. Who le joke with the day? Oh, have you forgotten? After they finish anointing David, Samuel entered the house and said, "You are the next king of Israel." Where did he go back to? He went back to the forest to stay with the sheep. See, the more humble you are, the more grace you enjoy. So let me tell your neighbor, be, beware of praise. I didn't hear you. Say it again. Shout it aloud. That's why, see, my pastors working with me, you better be careful. They will just be telling you, yeah, the ones gave us and just listen. Papa, you just sitting there in the office. He will come and preach on Sunday and take the glory. Which glory you won't take? He's just using you people to go and bring people. He will not come and preach as if he's the one. Ah, they want to destroy you. I wrote that in my notes, the story of Aitofel. Let me tell you the story of Aitofel. In the days of David, sir, they used to call the council of Aitofel the council of an angel. But Aitofel thought he was special, that he can just cancel just everybody. He didn't know that God only raised him for David. So he turned against David and went to join Absalom. Imagine his first counsel to Absalom. He was talking to Absalom. Somebody said, Shut up. Shut up that they have never told him before under David. And the Bible says he went to hang himself. Every eye to fear that is here, you better hear me. You may be raised because of David. Stop feeling more important than where you are kept. The first way that they, the devil injects pride is praise. Tani me, fanilo me. Ah. Anure lo somi domo ele du mare himelao. Number two, he will begin to show you your natural achievements so that you will begin to gradually believe that it is based by it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I didn't quote it right. He will begin to show your natural achievements so that you begin to gradually believe that it is by it. It is by your power, sorry, that you, be, you became progressive. Understand this very well. He will begin to show you so that you'll be thinking it's by your power. You, are, you have become who you are. Now, to some, he will show you your achievement and begin to show you that it, will be, it should be the basis by which you should choose friends. You know, you now use uh, you now use Oma. All your friends should be with from Oma class. See, every single time you have an achievement that you can call achievement, that you see it, you know that it's the devil that shows you. When he shows you like that, go back to God. Lie down and say, Lord, I thank you. No be me do I'm not you. I get calls almost every time we finish prayer. Sir, I enjoyed the service. The service was powerful. When you finish saying it, now God do. Listen to this. If you are not careful, this will make you begin to use natural achievements as a scale of judgment to determine who you should relate with or respect. When you begin to get to that point, you are becoming proud. When natural achievement is a source that determines who you relate with or who you have respect for. Which means before you respect a person, you want to know what, what did he pack? Kilo pack, sita.
I followed the burial program of Queen Elizabeth. On the last day of the burial, the priests came up and stood. He said, men and brethren, I will want you to remove all the symbol of power attached to the queen. Listen. So they went to remove the staff of authority, the crown that they put beside her, they remove it. They remove all the things that points to power. He now said, now, our sister, no more our queen, our sister will be laid to rest in the bosom of the Lord. She has become a sister. Maybe you don't understand the package of the queen. The queen does not travel without a doctor. The queen does not travel without two pints of blood. Two pints of her blood is inside her bag. In case of anything, the queen cannot take blood from any other place. You are now using achievement, physical achievement to determine who you respect. You better change. The end of the proud is fall. You, say, you know some people ask, you say, how old is she? That's the first thing you want to ask. How many degrees does he have? Whenever the devil shows you what your achievement, let it take you back to God. Beloved, as at the time God spoke to prophet Samuel about how he should go to Jesus' house to anoint for him one of his sons. Listen, David was an ordinary shepherd boy in the forest that was not deemed fit to be invited for such a meeting. But it was him God spoke about. What achievement did David add when God said, go and choose for me a king? And God mentioned, said to Samuel, go to Jesus' house. When he entered Jesus' house, who was the first person to come out? It was Eliab. Eliab was in the army of Israel. He was a huge man. He looked like the king. The Bible says the man of God did what? He took the oil and said, this must be the next king of Israel. God said, stop it. I don't judge the way people judge. People look at outward appearance. But me, God, look at the heart. That person you are saying, eh, yeah, this is the person I can relate with because of the car. Do you know whether he borrowed money to buy the, the car? Do you even know whether he's the owner of the car? You see car, you are saying, oh, God, come, oh, God, come, oh, God, come and sit here. Do you even know whether he's the driver? Your guy is inside. He says you should go and check what is happening inside the church. God said, I don't judge the people judge. That's why I see. It is in my own philosophy. I respect everyone. If you are proud, you can last. The second one came out. God said no. The third one, God said no. After all the seven brothers came out, God said no. Someone now say, said to Jesse, wait. Are these all your sons? God said, it is in this family. And there's one boy. He's in the forest. The question should be, why did you not invite him? I told you, all your sons, you should prepare them. It was because they devalued him. They didn't see him as anybody that any good thing can come out of. But that's the one God chose. So when the devil shows you achievements, that's not the basis of number three. Chia here. Let's look at number three. At times, the devil cast it as a spell. What does the devil do to bring, make people proud at times? It's a spell. It's a spell. Do you know that that was what happened to one of our former governors? He did well in his first four terms. Uh, four, 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 four years. By the second four years, he started talking to people anyhow. He got to the Allah of his palace and said, and said, Ghani Adam Sini, one in Ghani Adam Sini Moshi or some Moshi. Well, Allah of him, Mufeke Mokiba Bamileje, 
or mom and she baba. But she wari gani Adam said so ye. Aburu mini mojulo. Entani kuwa bebe ututi so me. I will code in my language. Listen. I visited one of our fathers in the faith. The man told me, he said, O domilu ti koko bere sine shishi. Mu de sofun kwe bushi mama she lo ni. Ulo domilu wa ti mo ti gbadu afun kwe ko the governor. Le yi to wa the governor ton ko wami wama. Mu wa walo. O dami do fun waka ti meri. O ni gbato alo sofun kwe a. Baba ma wa mbi. O wa jade o ni e wo mo mbi nusi. Mbi nusi. Shai ruka yi ni konek badu afu mizimo fi di governor ni. E wan soka ki ripe. E mo di governor. Mi pada wa dupe. Ki lo. E wo bite ma joku si mi ti ra yi ti yi bai. The man told me by himself. That's why I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. Every spell of pride sent your way. You shall not be possessed with it in the name of Jesus. That's why I always be praying for yourself. I don't hear. When this spell comes upon people, they suddenly begin to feel number one, that their mentors and friends are becoming too inquisitive in their affairs. She spelled him, but she worried. But she might come on here. One more come on. I want mentors. One kilo deton that sort of me gone. What in that? What in that sort of me do? The friends that you so that can question them before that can look at them and say, "Ah, oh, what happened now? What is this style?" They begin to feel that this ones are kilo de kilo de what in that. You now begin to notice a kind of isolation. Emi, eh, ti wali. Let me quickly take this. Okay, let me finish this one. You will notice that they will take offense in things they weren't taking offense in before. Then they will begin to isolate. Until you can be one tell your best, and be one of a auntie while in here. And to your kid tell you, what you are well, she reckon here, dear sweetie, or whatever. Your wife can say, dear sweetie, or whatever please now and I need water to take my bath that you gradually used to go to bring before it will now begin to irritate you in me don't you know I'm your whore <laughs> the thing is coming gradually let's take these two more questions so that we can close we can take the child dedication if you notice that the spirit of pride has gotten hold of you already how can you conquer it At this point, your first need is God. You need a total rededication of life so that the Spirit of God will help you come out of it. So what's the first thing you need? You need to pray. Two, it is important you locate your true mentor. I'm not talking about the mentors you chose out of pride. You know, out of pride, you can choose mentors. Mentors that cannot correct you. Mentors that cannot solve that nonsense that you are doing. Mentors that will only say you are doing well. That's what I always tell people. The mentor that can tell you the truth is the one that God has sent to you. Don't go to a church where the pastor cannot tell you truth. It will take you to hell. So if you notice that that spirit of pride has entered, go back and locate that one, that mentor you left. The one that you know that, ah, ah this one, ah, he can't lie to me. Even if you fought him, go and beg. So that you can open or they don't begin to tell you, you know, let me tell you this brief story in two minutes. I used to have a friend like that. He just came up. We attended the same program that we saw. One, a, a pastor was being ordained a bishop. 
So as he were doing his bishopric ordination, sincerely speaking, me too, I like it. The way all the bishops came in with their staffs, you know, it was very interesting. The, the program was interesting. Me too, I felt like maybe I should go join the college of bishop and become a bishop. But I have a covenant with God. I told God, I told God, I, I don't want that, any title that will not allow me to be who I am. So this, bishop, this man, he went to take the title of bishop. He now said they told them in their bishop school that as a bishop, you cannot be under anybody's counseling except the senior bishop that ordained you. That was where his falling started. As I'm talking to you now, he's dead. Listen. Last question. What can I do to avoid falling into the temptation of being proud? What can I do to avoid falling into the temptation of being proud? I'll tell you two things with two scriptures. James chapter 4 and verse 7. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Thank you. It's on screen. Therefore, do what? Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. What's the first thing to avoid falling into the temptation of being proud? Maintain your relationship with God. Don't practice religion. This one that on Sunday you just carry clothes, you, are, you go to church, you dance, you finish, you go back home, does not make sense. No, no, no. Give your life to Jesus. Become born again. Read your Bible on your own. God wants one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. The way he speaks to me, he wants to speak to you. No pastor is supposed to take the place of God in your life. I always tell them in church, when some people come to me, pastor, pray, waiting God talk. I'll say, anything we tell you, can't tell me, I'll cancel you. I am not supposed to be God's ordinary vo major voice to you. I am to be a minor voice of God to you. Whatever God tells you, I can confirm it from the Bible. But that you cannot hear God, it's only your pastor voice you are hearing. You are not saved. Oh. And God is our father. Do we have a father that does not speak to his children? Have you spoken with your son today? Have you spoken with your daughter today? Have you spoken with your children today? They are parents. They have spoken with them. Me too, I have spoken with my own children this morning. How can you now say you have a God as your father? You, didn't, you, you don't used to hear his voice. It's, there's no error with God. If you don't hear his voice, it's because you have not created time for him enough. Maintain your relationship with God, number one. Then number two, which I'll close with. Galatians chapter 2, 1 and 2. Galatians chapter 2, 1 and 2. Look at this. He said, then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. Verse 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were what? Of reputation, least by any means I might run or had run in vain. Now, what is that? Paul said, I carry my message to those that are my fathers. This is what I've been preaching for 14 years. I hope I've not run in vain. I hope I'm not running in vain. What's the second point, which is the last one for, for today? No matter how well God lifts or bless you, it is important you remain teachable, rebuke able, correct able. There should be a person in your life that can call you and you will open both your ears and your heart to them. If you don't have that kind of a person, you can't last. 
there should be somebody that can call you by your first name Dollar Marble. Yes, my, my father in the Lord or my mother in the Lord is calling me and you know. Paul said, I took my 14 years work to them for them to check. Are they the Holy Ghost? No, but they are the man ghost. You need people like that in your life. People that will call you and say, Come here. Christiana, why are you sleeping in the service? <laughs> As I was browsing all through the night. I watched one film, we didn't finish on time. I caught you, you were sleeping in the service. Upon the chewing gum in your mouth. Do you have such people in your life? You know why you should need, you need these people? These people will dictate pride in you. When they notice you are gradually becoming proud, they will know. They will call you. Have you learned something this morning? Are you sure? Pride cannot, you cannot take you far Pride cannot take you far. Pride is like you are, you are traveling to somewhere like Maduguri. You are in a car that has only two liters of fuel. It can't take you far. All this is not my age, mate. We are not in the same class. It can't take you far. We used to say it in my tribe. And it will Pride cannot take you far. So all those mentality, drop it. Eh, sir, sir, it's not my age. Drop it. You don't need it. Remain humble in your heart, and you will see God. Dedication. You lifted me above my dreams. You bless me 